The Terraplane has been in our collection since the 1990s. This is the truck the first time we saw it in Phoenix, Arizona. That's our daughter Stephanie checking out the interior of the cab. With a restoration project like this, as rare as it is, it was necessary for us to purchase a parts truck. That's Stephanie on the right and Sebastian on the left. This truck was found at a salvage yard in Fontana, California, known as the Twin H Ranch and owned by Bill Albright. This pickup provided us with a bed and the fender with the tire well for the spare tire carrier. Back then, we didn't take as many photos as we do now, and I often would incorporate our family into the photos. That's Trevor to the upper right in the purple, Sebastian to the lower left, Bill Albright is the one wearing the red ball cap, and his grandson is helping out as well. This is the pickup loaded up and ready to go to Prescott, Arizona. I've combined some pictures of the truck while it's under restoration, along with some video that I just shot a few days ago. The pickup truck has been done in a color that is known as ocean blue. This truck turns heads, and contrary to common belief, the bed for the pickup truck is real. It was uh, common for our son Trevor and my father-in-law Gary to help out with this restoration project. This is the truck. It is Humble Beginnings. And here it is with a lot of primer and some of the ocean blue being added to it. That's David at the top of the screen with our son Trevor to the lower left as they're lowering the bed onto the pickup. That's my father-in-law Gary to the right and he is helping out to make sure that the bed is being lowered with a hoist and that is placed just right. I hope you enjoy our little video. And now, here's David. My name is David Spence. Today we're going to tell you about my 1937 Terraplane Cab Pickup Express. Long name, actual name for the vehicle. Five, six years ago we did some shots, did a 30 second video, which you'll find on DNT TV about the vehicle, but it doesn't tell you a whole lot. We're going to tell you a lot more about it today. And it's going to be a series of videos where we cover the vehicle in depth. This vehicle was made in 1937, as I said. It is the fourth and final year of Terraplane as a make. 34, 35, 36, and 37 are the four years for Terraplane as a make. Prior to 1934, it was known as the Essex Terraplane. After 1937, it's known as a Terraplane as a model of Hudson. As you notice, if you see in the video on the hubcaps, you'll see that it says Terraplane Hudson. That tells you it's the make and not the model. If it said Hudson on top and Terraplane on the bottom, you would know it's actually a 38 hubcap telling you that it is a model of a Hudson. Having said all that, this vehicle is very unique in that the way Hudson made a pickup out of it, which is exactly the way it looked from the factory, is by chopping a four-door sedan body. Directly behind the door on the cab, they cut the sedan body, and they added the unique pickup parts to the cab to create what you see here. That means the lower portion, the belt line, the upper portion, and the back of the roof are all unique to the pickup itself. Also, they obviously made a pickup bed. The one difference that we have in the pickup bed from the way it would have been built is that we actually sprayed a bed liner in there. Having had to straighten that pickup bed, which started out looking as if engines had been dropped in it from a three-story window. The straightening was so serious that I didn't want to spend months and months and months actually going back and making it perfect to spray paint in it because there's no wooden bed that's actually the metal bed that was used by Hudson itself originally. And the problem with the corrugations there is they're unique to Hudson. It isn't something I can run out and buy a copy of. So we straightened that bed and did put in the bed liner. Other things of note here with what Hudson did, for example, is that the fender skirts were available on the, the pickup just as they were on the cars because the fender skirts are not standard. They are an option that you would buy back in 37 for a Terraplane. On the fender there you'll notice that we have the gas cap. 
in the pickup compared to the car, there's a very torturous route for that gas line to get to your gas tank. So it's a little fun to fill because you got to be real careful or it doesn't like to fill with a modern gasoline pump. However, it's quite workable and allows the position for the hole in the fender to be identical between the cars and the pickups even though the gas tank route is a little different because of the bed structure. The vehicle features a number of additional items that were actually from the accessory catalog, but they were all available, all literally possible to have on the pickup, or this pickup actually came with them. And as we go around, we'll tell you a bit about those. So we'll look at the back of the vehicle here and see some of the unique things that go with the pickup. All pickups always came with the Terraplane Hudson emblem right there on the back of the pickup bed. Didn't stamp anything in, made the pickup bed real simple. You notice that you can see welds showing. That's the way the pickup was made. They wouldn't have cleaned it up any better than this for actually painting it. So we didn't do that either. Down below, underneath the back of the pickup, we have some unique features to cover. It was only equipped with one tail light originally. This has actually caused me trouble once with a police car stopping me and not realizing that I'm grandfathered for only one tail light, which is in fact true in the state of Arizona. Besides only one tail light, I have added, correct, these are the Dua Safe accessory wigwag tail lamps, which we'll show you operating later on in one of the videos as to how they actually work. But these are accessory tail lamps that we use for turn signals and brake lights in addition to our regular tail lamp. And I got those years ago out of an ad in Hemmings and suffice it to say one of the most expensive things on the vehicle. Because we added the duo safes under the back, we did add something that's not on the original vehicle. We added a panel back here which covers up the gas tank somewhat and makes it nicer for the dua safes to be there and mounted on the vehicle. When they were mounted on the cars, they were mounted outboard on the fenders, but the problem with that is, is you really couldn't do that with the bed in place, so we put them underneath. Single tailpipe, that angle is in fact the way the vehicle was made. So we'll come around to the other side of the vehicle and look at some more of the unique features it's got. For example, when we're looking into the bed, they were always equipped from Terraplane by Hudson with toolboxes, as they call them. So if we open the back of the tailgate here, we find out that we actually have toolbox sides where we can stick stuff in to the vehicle. Also in the front, there are little openings in the toolbox area that allow additional storage. Now one of the interesting things they marketed the vehicle as is that contractors could buy it and take their people to work in the vehicle and use these toolboxes on the side for people to sit on. Not real safe, but certainly what they did do in 1937 was use a vehicle that way. Coming around the side, when we get to the passenger side of the vehicle, we find out that there's another unique feature about it. All of the pickups back in 37 came with side mounts. So the side mount is standard, is not an option. On the car, it would be optional, and on the pickups, it is standard. And it's complete with the correct side mount cover, everything just the way Terraplane actually constructed the vehicle at the time. So you would see this on a pickup, but you would only see it optional on the regular cars. When we come around the front, you can see specifically the Terraplane Hudson hubcaps, denoting it is a Terraplane as a make, again, not a Hudson, it is a Terraplane. If it were Hudson on top, Terraplane on the bottom, it would be a 38. Added to the front of the vehicle in this case, we have put on these little bullet-shaped lights so that we could actually have signal lights that look appropriate for the vehicle. They're actually little motorcycle lights that work out nicely, so they are not original Terraplane. On the other hand, all the rest of what you're seeing is the way the Terraplane was in 37 for a pickup, complete with the same lights you get on the car, the same grill you get on the car, although the grill is blacked out on the pickup. Also though, the unique thing is, is commercial cars, which a Terraplane cab pickup express is, 
has a different hood emblem that is only found on the commercial cars, and that's the correct hood emblem for it. The regular emblem for the cars is totally different from that and looks more like an orange sort of cigar shape, sort of Buck Rogerish. So this looks more like a windswept design. And an interesting thing about that is there are designs in the movie cars that look very close to that particular piece. On the front, you can see that Hudson made sure you knew it was a terraplane and the Hudson made it, but knew the terraplane was the make by the front emblem of the vehicle. Down below, we have a triangular additional rough triangle for a grill guard, a nice little accessory you could get. No, that wasn't exactly made by Hudson, but it looks great because Terraplane and Hudson, they use a triangle a lot of times for uh, identifying the company's products. Right down here is a unique piece that we've seen missing a number of times. This happens to be a little guard that goes in here that keeps you from having to have to uh, have a hole there in case you wanted to crank start the car. So you can actually crank start the engine in this vehicle if you take that piece out and use the long starter crank for it. Likewise, this is why you have a hole right in the center of your bumper because you can work with it that way too. Coming around to the driver's side, you can see, again, we have no side mount here. The pickups were not equipped with driver's side side mounts. That wouldn't have been normal. The side mount makes it extremely difficult to get to the engine anyway, so having two side mounts would really make it hard. On the driver's side, we also have a rear rear mirror installed, which is a rear rear mirror, as you can see, that works off the hinge. Very necessary in modern traffic, nice to have, so we can actually look at the traffic behind us because there's such limited visibility in the vehicle when we get inside of it. So this gives you an overview of the outside of the vehicle and uh, what in general it's like. We're going to be doing a couple more videos in the near future on this vehicle including inside features, what the engine's like, and we'll actually take you for a drive in it and let you know some of the neat things about how it operates when you take it for a drive because this vehicle is extremely different from what you think for most 1937 vehicles. So hopefully you find a little background on this car interesting and look for a couple more videos on this vehicle in the near future.